Friday's Crossing as we continue our exploration of the Celestine Prophecy James Rick by James with James Redfield, The Secret of Shambhala in Search of the Eleventh Insight. Okay, so we have been reading this slowly. I know I've been a bit slow in the last little while, but we are up to chapter nine, the energy of evil. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Siddhartha Tarot with the Buddhism um, oracle cards that I got. So let's um, take a moment to reflect on a message. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this chapter. Okay, chapter nine. Whoa, okay, so cards just flew. Let me just give, give me a second to pick this up. Okay, the first card we have is Two of Pentacles. So Two of Pentacles tells me there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be juggled. Okay, there is a lot of juggling going on here. Looking up what one's priorities are. Whoops, and the keyboard I just dropped. Be really clever for it. Do not want to break that. Okay, the other card we got, oh, three of pentacles flew out in the other direction. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So three of pentacles is about using your skills and your abilities. So it's quite interesting, one step at a time is a reminder here to take a minute when you're juggling something to use your skills and your abilities to manifest or create what's super important to you at this time okay so working out what your priorities are and so we know what this journey has been about very much about balancing out your energy um, making sure that you stay um, in a sense of well-being um, being able to have that sense of a higher awareness of what's going on so it's really important to work out what's important to you in this moment how do you stay in a very balanced and um, allowing yourself your awareness to expand and grow on some level so kind of interesting there so let's have a look and see what else are the cards whoa <laughs> that was kind of interesting wow those cards just flew out of the pack and lay down here so we have king of pentacles so it's always about looking for those opportunities allowing ourselves to be in a sense of again i get the sense of higher awareness these thoughts and ideas that are coming in now the reason why i say um in staying grounded is super important here and again, we get that balance of the emotions. We get those connections within ourselves. I do feel like that the two people here is more like your yin and yang energy. I'm actually getting a yin and yang energy within oneself. So not letting outside influences you in a way, but allowing yourself to become whole or balanced within oneself um, is super important as you're looking for the opportunities that arise in this um, in this in the path that you're taking very much so so let's see if there's anything else that spirit have for us in regards to this chapter <laughs> the cards are flying out okay one minute oh get them down pick up okay ten of cups again i get that sense of emotional happiness here i get emotional happiness completeness a sense of wholeness within one's one's own um emotions I think that sense of balance, I'm getting a very balanced energy here. Kind of interesting. So let's have a look and see what the um, Buddhist cards have for us in this moment. Take a moment to shuffle. I need the cards around just to Whoa, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time to put yourself first. Now, in a way, that sense of, again, about finding your own happiness 
and doing your own things to help others, you've got to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. You're finding yourself in balance. You're working out what your priorities are. You're getting your energy right. Um, again, what is your expectations? What are you focusing on? Is kind of important. And I'm not getting too much about what the card actually says, but I'm getting a sense of really about visualization on expecting your own body to be at peace within oneself, being able to visualize the positive energy that's going on. And I get a sense of, um, I get the sense, I know the card says limitation, but I'm getting a sense of being able to break through from any obstacles, know that you are unlimited. Okay, so I'm getting, when I'm reading these cards here, I'm getting the sense of it's very important for yourself to be able to visualize yourself unlimited, that anything is absolutely possible in the positive way. You know, see that positive energy coming in. Know that you that anything is possible when you stay balanced, stay whole within oneself. What an interesting message there. I love that. Okay, so let's continue with this chapter nine that we are up to. The energy of evil. Okay, so no sooner had we walked out of the bedroom than the sounds of the helicopters in the distance increased. Annie came back into the house and pulled out three heavy backpacks from a storage bin. She handed them to us, along with two parkas. I noticed that they seemed to have been conventionally made with cloth and stitching. I was about to ask about them, but she quickly ushered us out of the dwelling and led us down the path to our left. As we walked, Annie moved up beside Tashi, and I could hear him telling her about his decision to go to the temples. The rumblings from the helicopters were coming even closer and the blue sky had now turned into a thick overcast. At one point, I asked her where we were heading. To the cave, she said, you'll need some time to prepare. We walked down a rocky path which traversed the side of a sheer cliff and onto a plateau on the other side. Here, Arnie waved us into a small gully where we huddled listening. The helicopters moved in a small circle over the cliffs for a moment and followed our path exactly until they were directly over us. Arnie looked horrified. What's happening? I yelled. Without answering, she climbed out of the gully and motioned for us to follow. We ran perhaps half a mile across the plateau and into another hilly area, then stopped and waited as before. The helicopters circled behind us until they arrived directly overhead. A gust of frigid air hit us, almost knocking me over. At the same time, all of the clothes disappeared from our bodies except for the heavy coats. I thought this might happen, Annie said, pulling more clothes from the backs. I still had my boots on, but Tashi's and Annie's had disappeared. She gave him a pair of leather and put on her, another herself. When we finished, we made our way up the slope, climbing between the rocks until we arrived at a flatter area. A heavy snow shower was beginning and the temperature was falling. The helicopter seemed to have lost their way for a moment. I looked out on the once green valley. Snow had covered almost everything, and the plants already seemed to be withering from the cold. It's the effect of the soldiers' energy, Arnie said. It is destroying our environmental field. Glancing towards the sound of the helicopters, I felt a new surge of anger that banked immediately and stepped and headed straight towards us. Let go, Annie shouted. I moved up. Let's go, Annie shouted. I moved up closer to the small fire, feeling the morning chill. We had walked for another hour and spent the night in a small cave. In spite of several layers of insulated undergarments, I was still freezing. Tashi was now huddled up beside me and Annie was looking out through the opening at the frozen world outside. The snow had been falling for hours. It's all gone now, Annie said. There's nothing out there now but ice. I moved over to the opening and looked out. What was once a wooded valley with hundreds of dwellings was now nothing but snow and jagged mountains. Here and there were the bent, bent over remains of trees, but not a spot of colour could be seen. All the houses had simply vanished, and the river that ran through the centre of the valley was frozen over. The temperature must have fallen 60 degrees, Annie, Annie added. What happened, I asked. When the Chinese found us, the power of their thoughts and their expectations of frigid weather counteracted the field that we had set up to keep the temperature moderate. 
ordinarily the strength of the fields provided by those by those at the temples would have been strong enough to have kept the Chinese away altogether, but they knew it was time for the transition. What? They let them in on purpose? It was the only way. If you and the others who had found us were allowed in, there was no way to keep out the soldiers. You are not strong enough to keep all the negative thoughts out of your mind, and the Chinese have followed you here. You mean this is my fault, I said. It's okay. It is part of the dispersal. I wasn't consoled. I moved back to the fire and Annie followed. Tashi had prepared a stew of dried vegetables. You must realise, she said, that everything is all right with the people of Shambhala. All this was inspected. Everyone who was here is fine. Enough people came back from the temples to take them through the sp spatial windows to a new place of safety. Our legends have prepared us well. She pointed out towards the valley. You must focus on what you're doing. You and Tachi have made it to the temples without being captured by the military. The rest of what Shambhala has been doing to humanity must be known. She stopped as we both heard the faint ramblings of a distant helicopter. The sound grew fainter and finally disappeared. Then you must be more, much more careful, she said. I thought you knew not to allow negative images into your mind, especially hateful or disparaging thoughts. I knew she was right, but I still felt confused about how all that worked. She looked hard at me. Sooner or later, you're going to have to deal with your pattern of anger. I was about to ask this question when out through the cave opening, we saw several dozen people walking down an icy slope to our right. Annie stood up and looked at Tashi. There is no more time, she said. I have to go. I have to help these people find a way out. Your father will be waiting on me. Can't you come with us, Tashi asked, moving closer to her. I could see that he had tears in his eyes. Annie stared at him and looked out over the icy crevice at the other people. I can't, she said, hugging him tightly. My place is here, helping with the transition. But don't worry, I'll find you, wherever you are. She walked towards the mouth of the cave and turned around to face both of us. You'll be fine, she said, but be careful. You cannot keep your energy up if you are overwhelmed with anger. You must have no enemies. She stopped and looked at me and then said something I had heard many times on this journey. And remember, she instructed, smiling, you are being helped. Tashi looked over the, his shoulder and smiled at me. As we trudged through the deep snow, it was getting colder and I struggled to maintain my energy. To reach the mountain range holding the temples, we had to climb down the ridge we were on, across the frozen valley, and to climb almost straight up and over another mountain. We had made our way down almost a quarter of a mile without difficulty, but now seemed to be reaching the edge of a rock precipice. Below was a sheer drop-off of almost 50 feet. Tashi turned and looked at me. We'll have to slide down it. There's no way round. That's too dangerous, I protested. There might be rocks just under the snow. If we start sliding out of control, we could be hurt. My energy was plummeting. Tashi smiled nervously. It's okay, he said. It's okay to be afraid. Just maintain your visualisation of a positive outcome. Fear will actually bring the Dakini closer. Wait a minute, I said. No one ever mentioned that before. What do you mean? Haven't you been helped mysteriously and inexplicably? Yin told me Shabala was helping me. Well, I don't understand the relationship. I've been trying to find out what determines when the Dakini helps us. Only those in the temple know that. I just know that fear always brings these guardians closer. If we can still maintain our faith to some degree, it is hate that drives them away. Tashi pulled me forward off the ledge and we began to slide in the loose snow uncontrollably. My foot hit a rock and flipped me over and I began rolling head over heels. I knew if my hit, head hit another rock, it would, could be all over. But in spite of the fear, I managed to hold the vision of landing safely. With that thought, a particular feeling began to come over me and I was filled with a sense of peace and well-being. The terror subsided. Moments later, I hit the bottom of the drop-off and rolled to a stop. Tashi slammed into my back. I lay for a moment with my eyes closed. I opened them slowly, remembering other dangerous situations in my life when an inexplicable peace had come over me. Tashi was pulling himself out of the snowbank, and I smiled over at him. What? he asked. Someone was here. Tashi stood up and took, shook the snow off his clothes and began to walk on. You see what happens when you stay positive? Whatever temporary strength comes from anger cannot compare with this mystery. I nodded, hoping I could remember that.
Okay, that's it for the moment. Don't forget to check the links down below. Check the links on my channel. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded. Don't forget to check out Ko whoops, wrong way, Kofi. Right there, that link there, Kofi. There, Kofi. Don't forget to check out Kofi link that's um, in the description down below. And um, you can find downloads, discounts, um, readings, donated readings, or selected readings, selected prices, depending on what you want. Um, don't forget if you're a member on Ko-Fi, you do get free readings. You just have to click on the link in the shop for the free reading. Don't forget, um, as a member, you can also um, get um, free downloads and lots of exclusive content as well. Previews to videos, um, of course, to the Shambhala video, of course, there's always a preview for that um, before it gets released publicly on YouTube. So that's it from me. Take care and blessed be. Thank you.